Okay, so far we've seen some pretty cool features and even some cool new ones. But now I'm going to show you a real golden oldie, Secure External Password Store. This was first introduced in 10G. Yeah, you heard me right, 10G. And yet still, I rarely see it used outside in the real world. And I really find it's a shame. It is such a cool feature that can really increase security in your organization. So please, people, start using it. But let's see what it can do. I guess you've seen this many times around in your scripts, in your scheduling tools, or in your cron jobs. Connect to the database with a username and password out there in clear text. But what if you could do this? Connect to the database as the same user, but without specifying the username and password. This would be much more secure. And you can. With Secure External Password Store, it is the TNS alias that controls which set of stored credentials that you can use to connect to the database. And in SQLnet.aura, you can tell the client where it can find the key store that has the uh, credentials that you need to connect to the database. And then finally, you can create a key store, which is basically an encrypted file stored in your local file system, but it's encrypted with an encryption key that only the client knows, and it holds your credentials. You can use the mkstore command to add credentials into the file, and you use the TNS alias as an identifier, and then you specify the username and password. Obviously, this is a much more secure solution and it allows proper separation of duties. You can allow people con to connect to the database without knowing the username and password. You can avoid having hard-coded passwords in your script and you can avoid typing your password in clear text in the terminal. All these things are something that really increases security. Now, I've prepared a small demo where I'll show it in action. And in this example, I'm connecting to a non-CDB database, but you can use this feature to connect to any database, PDB, RAC, non-CDB root. As long as you connect via a TNS alias, you can use the secure external password store to store your credentials. But enough talking, let's see it in action. First, I'm gonna show you how you can connect with username and password. I'm just gonna start off with setting my TNS admin variable. And here I have a script which basically just logs on to the database and tells me which user I've logged in as and with which authentication method. Now I'm gonna to connect to the database by specifying username and password, and then I'm gonna execute this script. And you can see that I've logged on as batch and I've authenticated with a password, which makes sense because I've specified that on the command line to SQL plus, but it's not very secure. So let's see how we can use stored credentials and the secure external password store to make it better. First, I have to create a key store and I use the mkstore command for that. I have to specify a key store password that I have to use when I make changes to the key store. Next, I can add credentials. I use the TNS alias as an identifier. And then I specify the username and password that should be used when you connect with this alias. Now in sequenlet.org, you can see where the key store is located. It's specified with the wallet location parameter. And now I can connect to the database without specifying a username and password. It uses the alias to look in the key store for a set of stored credentials. And when it finds it, it can use those credentials instead of specifying it on the command line. And as you can see, I'm still logged on as batch I'm still authenticated with a password, although I haven't specified on the command line. This is really a very cool, much more secure solution that you can use when you have to execute something like batch scripts or reporting. So I really find this something of interest and I really believe you should look into it today or tomorrow.